and friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And guess who I've got online? I've got Rhonda. Are you there, Rhonda? I am, Brad, and I'm I'm very pleased to be here. It's fun. Now, how do you say your last name? Is it f just Farrah, Farrah like Farrah Fawcett? Yeah, yeah, Rhonda <laughs> Farrah. Got it. That's easy to remember. So I don't do these very long. I keep them kind of condensed because uh, you know that time commodity we've all got. Once it goes away, you can't get it back. So you got to start all over again tomorrow. So uh -huh. we do these kind of quick. So first okay. off, who is Rhonda? You married, got kids? You single, wild, and crazy? Who's Rhonda? I um, <laughs> have a devoted life partner. I have one daughter, one grandchild, numerous nieces and nephews, and a grand niece on the way. So that keeps you busy, I'm sure, especially during the holidays. You got to go do all that Christmas shopping. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'm uh, part time in Southern California, and my home is Connecticut, and all my family is in Connecticut. So I spend a good part of the year there as well. Connecticut's supposedly one of the most beautiful states in the country. Gorgeous. gorgeous I spent state. a little time over there, but we didn't get to see too much. We we're going up the coast to New York and all that, so we got to see uh -huh. part of it. It is nice. So the next question I have is like, what do you do? I know that I'm doing some research and stuff. You're like a uh, life coach, but I'd like to get more details of more specifically yes. what you do. Uh, specifically a lifestyle empowerment coach. And mm -hmm. before that, I was uh, approximately 25 years as a practic practicing psychotherapist. And then I decided I should really be a coach because it does a lot for the client. It puts the responsibility for the client's life in their own hands, mm -hmm. where I can lead them and guide them to basically have the life that they desire um, or to identify with them what it is that they desire, because oftentimes that's really the beginning point. What is it that I want? You know, and it's when we know what we want that we're not o only empi empowered, but we can actually receive it and live the life we desire rather than what I call a life of default. Sure. Yeah, I was just on Facebook this morning and someone was talking about fear and all that kind of stuff. And when someone yeah. says fear, right away you think of like being scared or something. But right. fear can be real subtle. And I was mentioning that sometimes you don't even notice this stuff and your, your pre-programmed self can start taking you on a path that's probably not the trajectory that you really want to go. So I think it's important. I'm an advocate of coaches, my wife is a coach, to have someone else be able to say, hey, guess what, we're getting a little off course. And you can see that stuff where somebody else probably can't because it's so, it's so subtle, they might not see that they're going the wrong direction, you know? That's absolutely true, Brad. And uh, I'm not immune to any of the getting stuck in this just because I'm a coach. Uh, oftentimes, I didn't feel that I was empowered, uh, not only as a coach, but as an individual, as a woman. And it was time to get unstuck. And that's probably when I made the break from becoming, uh, being a psychotherapist to a lifestyle coach. Well, I think it's, a, it's been a, a trend that has been happening since the inception of the Internet that all of a sudden everybody's wanting to help everybody, but some of them aren't uh, as qualified. Like you have some pre-training, some experience. And like my wife, she was a Spanish teacher, so she knows how to teach people right. but some people right. just because they like fitness all of a sudden they're a wellness coach but they don't understand right. the psyche part which I think is very important well I think the psychological part and what we're thinking and what we feel about what we're thinking is in fact the determinant of our external world mm -hmm. of what's going really on with us um, and if you ever want to know what you're thinking and I'll often ask a client that or an audience so what are you thinking? And they'll say, I don't know. Well, just look around <laughs> at your life because your thoughts become the things that you're thinking. And most especially your emotions produce those thoughts. So if you are in fear, if you're in rejection, if you're buying into limiting or negative beliefs, then that will determine your external world. Right. And a lot of times these uh, the beliefs, because you believe them so much, even if they're not true, you follow them because that's the way you're programmed. I mean, yes. I've got a background in magical entertainment. I was I did magic as a kid, and I did it all through through high school. And then when I graduated, I was I started doing it full time. So my brain is programmed for critical thinking because I can kind of see behind the veil, 
And oftentimes that gets me in trouble because I sort of prejudge that I think I know what's really going on and sometimes it might not be. (laughs) Right. Okay. But uh, my sense is that you land on your feet the majority of the time. Yeah. It's been very beneficial because I do sometimes see when someone might be doing something that that they may not have good intentions with them in it. But uh, my my point was that uh, I've been programmed since I was a kid, so I think a lot different than your average person. You know, I've also been entrepreneurial, so the idea of having a job and being stuck in an office for eight hours or ten hours a day is just foreign to me, you know? Right. <laughs> and there's another kind of stuckedness which will serve us or not serve us, and that stuckedness is, are we doing what makes our tail wag, or are we stuck <laughs> from the inside out, because it is an inside job. And we are really our best and most powerful guru if we can understand that all our answers are within just as the questions are so um, and that's that's another reason why taking responsibility for one's life and the life they wish to live is probably the biggest gift that we have Mm -hmm. but oftentimes we don't realize that we put our own desires in the hands of someone else thinking that well it'll come about if I just have this coach if I just have this teacher if I just have this mentor, if I pray and meditate constantly and that's fine. That's, that's a necessary step or number of steps in the process to living the life that we desire. But we also have to take action. Absolutely. That was, uh, became very evident when that movie The Secret came out and everybody thought they could yes. just dream about having a Ferrari in their driveway and it just didn't work. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, even, even Joe Vitale has to move his feet when it comes to uh, what he wants as far as cars. Yeah, I think uh, um, it's because that, that consciousness comes in, it's sort of etheric, and we're in a physical world, so you need to yes. take some physical action to acquire those physical things, and it will come about if you can stay focused on it. And I, I think people like you kind of, again, give people some feedback when they say, you know what I really want? I want to do this. And then you go, do you really want that? And you, you can kind of catch them, and all of a sudden they realize, oh, my God, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't because I I haven't manifested it yet. Mm -hmm. It isn't demonstrating. I'm not experiencing or expressing what I really want. And that answer lies within. So, and that's a question I'm asked about the law of attraction and the secret. And I always say the biggest secret is that we have that power within us. So it's time to start using it. I call it the authentic power with, from within. Some people call it the soul, uh, and to live, in touch and in alignment with your soul is really where it's at. And you sort of help people tap into that or access that or find it. Yes, yeah. to identify it and then begin to use it with the myriad of tools that we have at our disposal. Um, and it's not a boilerplate deal. It's very specific to who I'm dealing with, when I'm dealing with them, at what stage they're in. Are they ready? Do they really want, as you were just saying? what they think they want. Yeah. And that's okay because what we want changes from time to time and that's perfectly okay. Well, that's just it. It is dynamic and always changing and some people think that there's like one answer and then I'll be happy, but it, I don't think it works that way. It's, it's no. like a sailboat. You're always adjusting the sails to find out where you're going to get going. It's always yes. different. So yes. do you have um, like a website that you can offer people of how to get a hold of you or anything like that? I do. I do. The website is helpmerondanow.com. Helpmeronda, R-H-O-N-D-A, now.com. Just like the song. And, yes, just like the song, but put the <laughs> now on the end. And I invite people to go there and to peruse what's on the site. Um, I offer several coaching packages. Uh, the beginnings now of the Life Empowerment Club, Telec, T-L-E-C, are about to be unveiled. And that gives individuals as well as groups another option with respect to owning that power within them that is theirs and living an empowered lifestyle versus not. Again, living the way your tail wags. And, or is I it like, wagging? I like oh. that little saying because we've got a little dog and he's always wagging his little tail. So he's always yes. pretty happy. So i got to learn how to wag mine. Wag <laughs> right, the tail. That's it. Wag so I want to ask my favorite question and then I'll beam this up to the universe and we'll see who we can attract. But uh, my favorite question is the big why question. 
why is it that you're doing this as opposed to why didn't you move out to LA and be an actor like everybody else or why aren't you teaching yoga or being a surf instructor or, or maybe a paratrooper? Why, why did you choose this course or this career? Well, I think, uh, I think there is a bit of an actress in me. Um, however, I am, I'm blessed to be able to bless others. I care about people. Um, I love to nurture others, but I also like to have them understand that that power is really theirs, not mine. I can guide, direct, uh, and I've been very successful in doing that. However, the power really lies within each one of us, and that's my message to the world. The power lies within you, and you can choose it now, you can choose it later, you can never choose it, but the point is that you can have everything that you want. Your tail can wag just the way you want it to wag. Um, you can live an empowered lifestyle and be in a positive mode, in a loving mode, in a generous mode, in a secure, in a stable mode. You can feel great if you choose to feel great. And that's the biggest thing. Who chooses to do what? Um, so that responsibility lies with the each, within each of us individually, even me, even you. And it's, it's an interesting um, arena that I work in because, first of all, to me it doesn't feel like work. I love doing it. That's why I do it. I'm a nurturer. Um, I was, uh, I'm the oldest of three brothers and a sister, and I had a stay-at-home mom and actually a dad that preferred mom stay at home. But that lent to a very nurturing environment. And uh, Got it. I credit that with, with what, why I can be so nurturing. Um, and it's also important while we're talking about nurturing to nurture oneself, not just everyone around them. I think women and men also, but I think especially women know how to nurture and nourish everyone around them. Sure. And oftentimes that's disempowering to them. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but begin with yourself because selfishness is the most selfless thing we can do. Well, I've you always said if, selfish it, in certain ways. if I didn't exist, then nobody else would either. Exactly. In my head. One, <laughs> one must give, no, no, you're absolutely, one must give themselves the oxygen first. Yeah. In the, you know, the flight attendant will tell you that in the unlikely event of an emergency, give yourself the oxygen and then attend to absolutely. those around you. And it's very true, or we do become debilitated. And the, the other thing that can happen is we've all had debilitating situations. Uh, I'm a breast cancer thriver. That's thriving breast cancer survivor. Um, I've had the, the divorce issues, deaths in my family, um, all these limiting, negative, seemingly debilitating issues that come up. And to realize that we can become empowered from those because they teach us lessons and they move towards our strength and what we would like to fulfill within our own lives, as well as those that surround and influence us and that we surround and influence. So it's not all bad news. We need the good and we need the not so good. I totally agree. You need, you need something need to that. compare it to. We need all of it. Yeah, you got to have something to compare it to, right? Yes. The grass is always greener on the other side, so you got to kind of right. see it from both points. Well, I'm going to seal this one up in the can and put it up to the universe and we'll see who we can attract. But I appreciate you today for being on Synergy Cafe. Once again, the website is helpmerondanow.com. Yes. Got it. Yes, it is, Brad. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Peace. Peace.